Will you give a huge round of applause and welcome to Aidan Green, ladies and gentlemen, right here in the front. Aidan Green. Hello. Um, so for as long as I can remember, I've been in love with one thing, speaking. Since I said my very first word, I just didn't want to stop. So it was a mild inconvenience when at the age of four, uh, when at the age of four, I, uh, at the age of four, I developed a stammer. And that isn't a joke because back then I barely knew I stammered. Sometimes I would just like, uh, I would just repeat the first sound, uh, the first sound, uh, the first sound of, a, uh, first sound of a word. Okay, it was totally, totally, uh, uh, the, it was totally, totally innocuous. Okay, so then when my speech therapist said to, uh, said to, uh, said to, said to my mom, uh, the, the, uh, said, th said that, that I would never lose, uh, uh, the, that, that I would never lose my stammer, that was no big deal, okay? And then shortly after, that became a very big deal. Um, so I just finished my first year of secondary school, where I was a very happy kid, I was very confident, I'm very good in school. And so it was the first day of summer holidays. And I was a, and I was a, 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 and, a, and so I was at home on my own, okay? And the phone rang. So I picked up the phone and I tried to say hello and nothing came out. And then they said hello and I tried to respond and nothing came out. And I kept trying and forcing and forcing until eventually I ran out of breath and they hung up. And five minutes after they phoned back and I was too scared uh, uh, that, and I was too scared, uh, and I was too scared, I was too scared to, to answer it, because suddenly this innocuous stammer had become totally, uh, had become totally, uh, uh, become totally debilitating. So that September, I went back, uh, I went back into school, and things had changed completely. I was never happy. I seemed as if I was really unintelligent because I'd lie the whole time. Say that the teacher asked me something, I'd say I don't know because, because I just couldn't say it. Or say if the teacher asked me for, um, for, uh, for my homework, I would say no, I don't have it done because the fear of that was way less than the fear of speaking. And so in my head, I thought, no, this is fine. I'm getting by. Nobody knows I stammer. And clearly everyone did know, but I thought it's fine because nobody knows and I'm getting by. And then one day I stopped getting by. It was in English class and we were reading a book, I think it was Carrie's War. And there was a character which was called Hepzibah, which I maintain to this very day is the stupidest name in the world. <laughs> Like, there's too many sounds in one word. It was just stupid. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm on that particular day, okay? Right, uh, I think he started from the, top of the, uh, uh, from the top of the list. So I knew I was going to have to, uh, so I knew I was going to have to, uh, have to read, okay? So I looked down and found my paragraph, and there she was in the second sentence. <laughs> Hepzibah. So as all the people before me read, I got filled with such a sense of fear and dread and a sense that in no circumstances would I be able to say this word. And then it was John Farley, the person before me, and I was shaking and I was already quite short of breath. And then, and then it was me. And so I mumbled and bumbled through the first sentence. And it took me, it seemed like an age for like seven words. And then finally, there she was. And I tried to say it, and I said, hep. But I couldn't get past that first sound. And I tried again, I went, hep, hep, hep. And I kept trying and trying as I got shorter and shorter of breath until eventually there was no sound coming out of my mouth whatsoever. Until eventually, I put my head in my hands and I started to cry. And I could hear all of the chairs turning. I could feel all of the eyes on me until eventually the guy sitting beside me said, Sir, he just can't say it. And then the next person read, 
And then the bell rang and people just streamed out. And I had reached my, my lowest point because what was the point of being alive when I couldn't do the thing I love, when I couldn't speak? So I think it was around then, uh, around then that, uh, uh, I think it was around then that my mum, she was taking me all around the country looking for a cure. She took me to reflexologists. She took me to some hypnotherapists. I think, I think that I got the Catholic cure for a stammer. Um, <laughs> surprisingly ineffective. Um, <laughs> who would have thought it? Um, so then one day... She said, Aidan, there's this thing I found and it's called the Maguire Pro Program. And straight away I was like, no, like I don't want to do it. All of this is bullshit. But she was like, no, Aidan, you have to. And she brought me up, okay? And she made me do it. And the first thing they said was, this is not a cure. And so over the course of a weekend, they entirely broke down the way I spoke and they built it back up from the ground. So I'm afterwards... Um, um, so, uh, so, uh, so clearly I'm afterwards, that wasn't a cure, but I had a way of being in, uh, I had a way of being in control, uh, I had a way of being in control of, uh, uh, in control of my speech for the first time in ages. So the next Tuesday, I had English, and I went in, and that day, same book, he started from the top of the list, and I'm like, yes. I get to read. So I looked down and I found my paragraph and it was a big, juicy paragraph and there she was. First word, first sentence, Hepzibah. And all of the people, they read before me and I got filled with nerves, but, but also excitement because I knew that I could do it. I knew that I could say it. And John Farley was reading and he had a huge paragraph, but I steeled myself and I told myself that this was it. I was going to prove everyone wrong. I was going to prove all the people who saw me cry wrong. I was going to prove my speech therapist wrong. And eventually it was me. So I paused for a moment. I took my time. I took a really deep breath. And then I went to say that word as fluently and as beautifully as I could. And as I went to say it, the bell rang. <laughs> and everyone just stood up and walked out <laughs> as if nothing had happened. And so that is not the point of the story, okay? <laughs> the point is, I love speaking, and I loved it so much as a child. But that love, that brought me the greatest pain I will ever experience in my life. And I'm so glad I have it, because now I can appreciate my love of speaking so much more. And that's it.